Welcome to the Lend Academy podcast, episode number 93. This is your host, Peter Renton, founder of Lend Academy. Today on the show, I'm delighted to welcome John Donovan. He is the CEO of BizFi. But John has been around this industry for a long time. I've known him for many years. He was employee number one at Lending Club all the way back in uh, January of 2007. And so he really, he saw Lending Club pre-launch before they even got going all the way through till it was uh, it was quite a successful platform. He stayed there through uh, late 2012. And since then, he's gone and done a number of different things. And he has ended up at BizFi, which is another company that's been around a while that I've known for some time. They're a small business lender. They run a borrower marketplace as well as uh, operate off their own balance sheet. Really interesting company and interesting opportunity for John. So I wanted to get him on the show to talk primarily about BizFi and what it does, what makes it different and what's it's focused on for the future. Hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the podcast, John. Thank you very much, Peter. Great to be here. Okay, so so you've been around this industry for longer than longer than most people, and before we start talking about BizFi, I wanted to just have you talk about a little bit about your early days in the industry. Uh, you know, I know you you started off at Lending Club, so can you go and and talk about uh, what you've done in your career over the last you know like eight or ten years? Sure. And I mean, even before, I've always really worked in, you know, what I would consider to be financial technology before it was financial technology, but really started my career at MasterCard for a long time, really understanding the payment environment, worked there for five years in Europe, worked for a lot of years in the States on the consumer credit side, on global product development, a variety of areas. And, you know, really at a certain point, it was, wow, I want to try out this startup stuff. (laughs) <laughs> and so I, I left MasterCard in 2005 to go to a company called Border Free. At the time, it was called E4X. But, you know, that was a company that was helping Internet merchants sell in foreign currencies. So did that for two years, kind of helped redo the strategy. And that's where I met Renault or when I met Renault, who had the idea for Lending Club. So started talking to Renault in the middle of 2006 and liked the idea. I had never heard about peer-to-peer lending before that. And, you know, we got together for coffee a few times, conversation, and then he dropped the bomb on me that the company was actually in California. So um, the whole time I was at Lending Club, I commuted from Connecticut. Right. But, uh, you know, Lending Club was an absolute blast. I had talked to my wife when I, when I left MasterCard to say, hey, let me try a few different startups. And, you know, I went to E4X, which was a well-funded entity that the, kind of the strategy needed to be redone. Going to Lending Club, it was really an idea at that point, and uh, that was that was tremendously fun to put in place the financial services, to put in place the relationships with the banks, the credit, the underwriting, all those other things. Left Lending Club to try the whole investing side of the business, which I have to say, I've, I've got tremendous respect for the people who, who work in equity and venture investing. Mm-hmm. It's not for me. Right. You know, too removed, not operational. So I really didn't enjoy that part of it. And as I was leaving a venture fund, I had been an advisor to Circleback, Michael Solomon. And, you know, he, we were talking and he said, wow, if you're leaving that, why don't you come on board and help us uh, with a few things here? So I had joined Circleback in February of last year. And, uh, you know, it was at the point that they were going through and raising funding. And, you know, really, unfortunately, weren't able to get funding, weren't able to do other things for Circleback, so we put it into servicing mode. But what I did realize, and the the benefit for me personally, was that I really did like getting my hands dirty in the operational aspects of Mm -hmm. business. And and, um, I had known BizFi for, gosh, 10 years. In fact, a, a funny story is that Steve and Walt, who were running BizFi, I had talked to them back in 2007 when we were getting Lending Club going to say, hey, do you know anybody in the bank partnership space? And they actually recommended Web Bank. So that's how Lending Club came to develop a relationship with Web Bank, was actually through BizFi. Huh. Yeah. I've never heard that So before. small circle. Yeah. 
Okay, so so let's so obviously you know you did Lending Club, circle back both consumer lenders, uh, BizFi, you know a small business lender. What was the what? Why did you decide to go into you know, small business lending here at BizFi? Really, uh, you know, a new challenge and a different space. I think it's similar in that you're really looking at financial technology. You're really looking at how can you make operations work more efficiently. You're providing a great service in terms of getting funds in the hands of small businesses. So it was a different element of it. While I was at Lending Club, I had, you know, managing underwriting there, we were doing some small business lending, but not in the same way, not with a specific product. So it was an area that I had always wanted to jump into and someplace that I thought I could provide some value. So that, that really, you know, caused me to take that jump. And uh, it's been, gosh, I've been here now four months. Great learning curve, but a lot of value. One of the key areas for me with BizFi was Marketplace. Mm-hmm. So BizFi had launched a marketplace a little over a year ago, where as opposed to launching or offering one product to their customers, they actually have partnerships with 45 different entities. And, you know, if a small business is coming in and needs something that, you know, BizFi can give a small business loan, they can give equipment financing, you know, through the relationships that they have, as well as balance sheeting. So some of the same challenges we've heard in the past of Lending Club with, oh, they don't have skin in the game, you know, without balance sheeting it, they don't truly understand. While I don't believe that type of comment, you know, BizFi is in kind of a unique place in that it does balance sheet and it does marketplace. So so that was another attraction. Right, right. So then I'm curious about, well, actually, firstly, we should just, I just want to clarify something. So BizFi used to be Merchant Cash and Capital until fairly recently. I think it was, um, maybe it was the last year or the year before, but it was... Yeah, uh, when they launched Marketplace, so I believe late 2015. Right. Okay. So it used to be Merchant Cash and Capital, focused on short-term lending. So today, can you explain the BizFi offerings? I know, you, you know, you, like you said, there's a Marketplace, there's, you got the balance sheet lending. What are the offerings for the small business owner? Yeah, so, you know, it... it As I was on the investing side of the business, I had looked at a few small business lenders. And, you know, what struck me as I was going in and I and I sat with one entity looking at how they were doing underwriting and looking at what the the business had borrowed, let's say. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I saw is businesses had equipment financing. They had inventory financing. They had an SBA. You know, they basically, businesses require capital. And so there's a wide breadth of needs that they have. And it's not one solution that satisfies all of that. Mm -hmm. It depends on what they can qualify for, certainly. You know, in terms of many people want that SBA loan that has a very low interest rate. But even those that qualify for an SBA loan also need short-term financing for inventory or for other things. So, you know, what BizFi has through those partnerships is offering both short-term financing, but also SBA equipment, invoice financing, franchise, medical financing, line of credit, that whole assortment of things that a business may need in one shop. Okay. So basically, you're, what, what I hear you say is that you offer pretty much all kinds of financing that a business may need. Correct. And and we're only balance sheeting the, the merchant cash advance because that's what the history is of BizFi with, with merchant cash and capital. But as we expand marketplace out, we're able to offer a much more holistic solution and hopefully for our partners, give them higher conversion and for the businesses, give them faster access to cash. Right, right. Okay, so you're the founder of uh, of BizFi, Steve Scheinbaum, I've I've known him for quite some time, and and he's been the CEO for I think well, from almost from day one till you came on. So, why did he decide that he needed someone like you and wanted to step away from the CEO role? Sure, you know it's interesting. I think entrepreneurs, the folks who really start the businesses. They, they tend to be salespeople. They tend to, they want to be on that front line, the energy and everything else. So with Steve, you know, Steve is, is doing what he loves, which is how can he generate more business for the company? And what he didn't love was the operational aspect of it and the managing, you know, day to day. So really brought me in to be able to handle that aspect of it. So, 
you know, as I mentioned before, I've known Steve for a long time, great partnership. I, my history has always been with working with other strong people. You know, I just find it a lot more fun to have a person there that you can bounce ideas off of and you can grapple with tough issues. And, you know, whether, whether that was, you know, Renault at Lending Club, whether it's Steve here, you know, that was uh, the, the role that we found that made sense. Right, right. Okay. So can you, can you give us a bit of an idea about the scale of BizFire today? You've got, you know, you've really got two businesses, really. You've got your, you know, the, the, the business, the, the loans that you underwrite yourself, and then you've got the business where the, the loans that you kind of, that you forward on to others. But can you give us an idea about the scale of each, of each part? Sure. The, you know, if you look at the, the history of the business, it took 10 years for BizFi to do their first billion dollars, right? Mm-hmm. So from 2005 to 2015. Mm-hmm. It took two years to do the next billion. And last year, they did a lo- little over $550 million. Now, prior to Marketplace, it was really all the advanced business. Mm-hmm. But currently, you know, it, that's about 70% of the business in terms of what ends up getting balance sheeted. Okay. So, you know, the other sides of the business and partners have, you know, are accounting for roughly a third and we think longer term will account for the majority. Right. Right. It makes sense. That makes sense. So, so then you've got this massive breadth of products. I mean, you know, I look at your website and you've got, you know, pretty much everything. So who, who is the typical borrower that's coming to BizFi these days? Sure. It, it's, you know, certainly you're seeing people who restaurant, retail, they need working capital and inventory. They tend to have 75000 a month in revenue. They tend to be in business over five years, tend to be a little, you know, over 40 years old, tends to be the segment. FICOs are decent. The average advance is 40. I think we'll see, you know, as we open up different channels, that demographic will change some. Mm-hmm. And certainly the products that we're offering have to match what those folks need. So, you know, that's something that I think will evolve over time. But, but you know, that gives you a feel for who our customers are today. So are there any specific verticals that you, that you target or is it just across the gamut? You know, I mean, ultimately my goal is, is how can you provide funding for every qualified business in America? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think as you look at how – Lending has taken place over time. You know, I, I equate it to a certain extent on, on the consumer side, where when I started working for MasterCard, there were 50 banks that represented less than half of the consumer debt. There's now five that represent over half on the consumer side. Mm-hmm. You've never had that concentration on the small business side. You know, it's always been a more distributed environment where there are smaller players providing the funding. But even in that instance, what you've had is the larger banks have bought the community banks. And where I think the numbers are, there used to be 12,000 community banks. There's now 5,000 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And those community banks have tended to do better underwriting than the larger banks because they know the businesses in their community. Right. Um, You know, as, as we start to see this change and you start to see how you get to customers, what we're seeing is these small businesses, 20% of them are accessing, they're going online for their funding. We're certainly seeing that the majority of the customers who talk to us are doing so after business hours and through a mobile device. Mm -hmm. So as you look at the channels, as you look at, at everything else that's going on, certainly on the consumer side, as well as the business side, it's looking at what are the easiest ways for us to make life easier for these small business owners? So, you know, we have partnerships in place with banking organizations. We've got partnerships in place with, you know, entities like Jack Henry. And we're looking at how do we best expand those, but really try to focus on, you know, who, who are the businesses that we're most likely to streamline the discussion with. So they're more likely going to be online. Not necessarily it's an online business, but, you know, they have a website, they're comfortable with uh, technology online, and that's how we'll communicate with them more and more. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So then why, I'm just curious, you've got, you know, you've got your, your balance sheet with the, that you're putting in, you know, quite a lot of volume through. Why don't you, 
do more of this yourself rather than passing the loan on, whether it's you know an equipment finance loan or you know just some other term loan. Why don't you do that yourself instead of passing it on? You know, I, I think part of it is knowing what we do well and what we don't do you know, well, I mean, that, that was a challenge certainly that we faced at Lending Club where in the early days when we looked at small business, you know, we realized to underwrite that well, you have to do cash flow underwriting. And each of these elements, whether it's equipment finance, whether it's SBA, whether it's, you know, anything else, there's a specialty to it. There's a finesse. Right. And we'd rather partner with people who can make that process as efficient as possible as opposed to thinking that we can do everything better than everyone else. I mean, I think certainly we've shown that for what we balance sheet, we can operate that well. But, you know, again, trying to put those businesses' interests in front, and a lot of times that's challenging to do. Right. But going and saying, hey, what is it that they specifically need and what's the best way to satisfy that and who would be the partners that make sense for us to bring onto the platform? And, you know, at the end of that, it's five o'clock and there's not much more you can do in a day. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Right. So, so then can you just talk, talk a little bit about the, let's just talk about the loans that you keep on the balance sheet or the advances. Like are these actual merchant cash advance type? Are they short term loans? I mean, what are the loans and just what are the sort of the terms of the loans that you keep on your balance sheet? Sure. So yeah, their advances, average duration of about 11 months. 15 to 33% advance rate. So they're a typical advance. You know, it's, it's the business that uh, had been operated from the very beginning with Steve. And I think there's certainly things we can streamline. There's certainly other areas, but it tends to be, you know, hey, we can get someone cash in three days, sometimes same day. And if you know, there, there was one, you know, recent deal that I looked at that I thought was incredibly interesting. I, I'm into boating, mm -hmm. and I had seen that we provided an advance to a shipyard. And it was at the end of the season. I thought that was very strange that we would do that at the end of the season and started looking into it. And what I found is that they had a lift that had broken. They, you know, at the end of the season, they're pulling the boats, putting them onto the yard, and it's where they generate a significant amount of their revenue. They didn't have the money to replace that. They needed to get the money within, you know, same day, next day. It's someone we had a previous relationship with. And that ended up making a lot of sense for them and for us because they're, they're able to salvage all that revenue that otherwise would have been significantly delayed or lost. Mm -hmm. Right. Makes sense. So then when, I just want to dig into the underwriting just a little bit here. Do you, like, sure. do, do you, how much of it is a consumer, you know, you're underwriting the consumer and how much are you underwriting the, the small business? Is there, you're obviously, it's not a consumer loan, but are you, you know, how does that interplay work? Sure. The, you know, certainly as you look at underwriting of, of the business, it looks at cash flow first and foremost, mm -hmm. you know, is, is it a business that generates revenue? You know, they haven't had any BKs. They're otherwise healthy that we can see that they can actually afford to pay this back. You know, is it in a sector, in an industry that makes sense, that doesn't carry any excessive risk? Mm -hmm. Do the principals have decent credit? So have they shown themselves historically to, you know, pay things back, right? And for that, you are pulling you know, credit bureaus and other things like that. And then, you know, last is just overall character, right? We're interviewing every single business. We're looking into the details. Our underwriters have a good feel for how different industries work. So through that discussion, they, they can understand, hey, is this a, a, a business owner who understands his business, who is probably going to use the money for the purposes he, he or she outlines? That's really the process that we go through with every advance. Okay, so just so you actually physically speak to every single every single customer. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and for larger ones, we'll actually you know have an entity go take pictures, you know, so that we we have a feel for the real retail front. We integrate in social data from a fraud standpoint, um, making sure that it is a legitimate business. Looking at all this, the state filings, you know, all of that. Yeah, it's a deep, it's a deep process. Interesting, interesting. So, you know, you're obviously. Um, I want. I want to talk about how you find these customers now. I mean, you've 
you've obviously got some online uh, presence there. I see. I see your ads around. Are you working with uh, with brokers as well? Are you are you working offline? I mean, how can you just take take us through how you're finding these customers? Sure. I think in most most things in life are in thirds for some reason. I've never figured <laughs> out why. But a third of it is is direct, right? Where we're doing direct mail, we're we're doing you know other other media c- to communicate directly with that entity. Mm-hmm. A third is through what I call channel partners. So, you know, I, I mentioned Western Independent Banks. I mentioned Jack Henry. You know, we did a deal with an entity called uh, Internex. There's a lot of different channel partners that we have, which is about a third, and then a third from sales partners, which tend to be more of the ISOs, other sales offices that we're working directly with. We've developed some proprietary technology that allows submissions to be you know, sent in electronically, other things that help streamline that process for those sales offices. Mm-hmm. And you know, some of those, uh, those ISOs have come under a, a bit of flack in recent years. I mean, are you, is that mix changing for you? Are you, are you comfortable with that and what, and how do you, because we want, obviously you want every transaction should be a win-win and the, the negative press that some of the ISOs have is that they're just trying to get their commission and move on. I mean, what are you, how, how are you policing that channel? Yeah, absolutely. The the it's an area that's always being looked at and and looked at, you know, even more as as I've come on, but it's something that they've certainly looked at in the past. And, you know, looking at what's the quality of the submissions that come in, what is the collections rate on those to make sure that it isn't an ISO that's bringing in, you know, risk that that is not something we're comfortable with or that there's any confusion in terms of the terms or anything else that the business uh, manages. So again, we're not just funding something. Our underwriters are going to speak to every single customer, whether they came from an ISO or something else. So it's going to have to go by our specific underwriting. But as you know, in the space, you know, you've got to be on top of all your channels. You've got to be on top of every way that that your customers come to you because you can just have negative selection that exists in how marketing um, Mm -hmm. went out to that person that brings in risk that you otherwise wouldn't see. So certainly something that we have looked at in the past, but, you know, we're certainly increasing those efforts to, uh, to look at that. Right. So I want to switch gears to the other side of the balance sheet just real quick here. You have you keep these loans on your balance sheet uh, for the most part. What are your funding sources to be able to do that? Sure. So, you know, as is as is typical in this we've we've got a, a partner that provides us with senior debt and then we have junior and mes debt underneath that. So it's it's the classic structure. I think certainly what we're looking for in the future is marketplace for lenders where you can bring in more of, you know, a direct approach that has been done in other categories. Mm -hmm. Uh, But right now I'd say it's the classic debt approach. Right. Of, you know, a senior, a junior, a mez. Okay. So that's interesting because that was was my next question really about um, putting a marketplace in for lenders, something you obviously have a lot of familiarity with. So that's, that's coming down the track. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're seeing a lot of interest that people have in in putting smaller pieces of debt to work. So it's an area that I personally am very interested in, and I think the category is right for. So I think you'll you'll see things like that take place, you know, within the next year. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So then, so what else are you working on for for this year? I feel like you know you're obviously been in the job of a relatively short amount of time. You're still on a learning curve, but yeah, you know, you've really got a business here that has pivoted away from being a pure play, you know, merchant cash advance. And you said yourself that eventually the majority is going to be run in this kind of borrower marketplace. But you know, where do you where are you going to take uh, this business going forward? Yeah, you know, I certainly looking at the partnership strategy. I think that's a big area for growth, and with that is making sure that the marketplace is dynamic enough that it's satisfying the needs of those customers. Certainly, we're always um, interested in lowering our cost of capital. We're always interested in making sure that the, the business is properly equitized. So those will be efforts that you'll see this year. And then on top of that is just overall enhancing the brand. I think the BizFi name is a great name. You know, certainly looking to make sure that we use that more consistently as we, as we expand. 
Right. Okay. Last question. I know that we, you know, we are recording this uh, a few days before Lend at USA. We're actually, it's actually going to be published after Lend at USA. But I'm curious about what uh, I know. You've, you've been, you, you spoke at the very first Lend. I think you've, you've been to every one. And I'm just curious about what you're looking forward to when you uh, go to Lend it next week. You know, it, it's uh, now that I'm back with a corporate gig, so to speak. You know, I'm just I'm looking at the opportunities that Lendit always provides just in terms of meeting people that I haven't seen for a while. I know lots of people who are coming in that I've already set up some, you know, coffees with and lunches with, but really just seeing the the vibrancy of the rest of the fintech community. And I think Lendit certainly has shown itself to to get the right people in. So I'm looking forward to reconnecting with people I haven't talked to in a while and then just seeing really what else is out there. You know, what, what's going on? I think the whole thing with the, you know, the, the new administration and what's going to happen with Dodd-Frank and CFPB and, you know, that whole area will be very interesting as people are approaching it. What's going to happen with cost of funds going forward? You know, how expansive do we think the, the securitization market is going to be? So really just looking forward to the whole discussion. Right. Okay, great. Well, I look forward to seeing you next week. John, I really appreciate your time today. Excellent. Thank you very much, Peter. Okay, see ya. Yep, bye-bye. One of the big differences between consumer lending and small business lending is complexity. Consumer loans, let's face it, they're relatively simple. You've got, you can get a term loan from one of the online lenders or even from some banks. You can take out a loan through your credit card. And yeah, maybe get a home equity loan, but those options are all very similar and you're not really faced with you know, a complex choice, which is really going to impact you in vastly different ways. Whereas with small business, you have, you have all kinds of different financing options. You've got you know, the term loans, you've got SBA loans, you've got equipment financing, invoice financing, you've got merchant cash advance, and you've got all kinds of different products which are going to have a different impact on your business. And I think the average small business owner, unfortunately, is not very financially savvy. And I think they need, they need help to steer them through this process because at some point the reality is that a small business may need a term loan which is really the best solution for them a low monthly payment or they may need money right away which John used the example of the shipyard in this in this episode and that's something that if they if they tried to go and get an SBA loan for that they might have gone out of business so this is uh, this is why I think companies like Bizfire are providing a real service because small business owners need to know the different choices they need someone really there to point them in the right direction and I think that's what companies like Bizfire are doing there are many others in the space as well and I I think it's something that is going to become more important uh, as as time goes on. And I think small business owners are really well positioned now, much more than ever before, to, to receive the right advice. Anyway, on that note, I will sign off. I very much appreciate you listening, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.